So here we are in a world come full circle. The true great falls of men are to be concluded with 43 years of the good fight of faith. Satan has been ruling over the kingdoms of men by pretending to be God and telling us that the ways of men, the righteousness of men, the Bibles of men, the moral standards of men, the preaching of men, the ways of men are just as good as the ways of God. He lied. He said if we'll work, bow down before him, that we'll have all his blessings, Matthew chapter 4. Worship him as king, there'll be peace on this earth. He lied. Why have we been forced to be under Satan's rule? We're told in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16, without the Bibles of men, without Satan ruling over this world with the Bibles of men, Christ could never have been crucified. Evil men could have never tried to destroy the world as they're trying right now. And there has to be spiritual warfare. We have to fight the good fight of faith for 43 years. The last days of the kingdoms of men. The last days of Satan's rule. But remember the book of Job? Human suffering, what's that about? Under the ways of men. We patiently endure the suffering of the ways of men until the first and now the second coming of the Lord. You see, the Lord had to hide away his Bible, his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, because too powerful. You could not have had the ways of men had the Bible not been hidden away. But we're going to get the Bible back fully, 43 years. That's when the kingdom of heaven returns. The great wedding feast. And Christianity then will continue on for 720 years after Christ resumes his reign with the royal law of agape love but first we've got to start prepping for the great and terrible day of the lord and that's what the book of revelation is about the book of revelation is an outline of the new testament 43 years of christian spiritual warfare it's a dual prophecy it's about the first century and it's about modern man right now if you have ears to hear you can read in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 through 21, the coming of the Lord is near. That means in the first century, it was right then, that very year, 70 AD, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed. Probably Rome was destroyed the same year. The kingdom of God came the same year. For us, we have 43-year warning, the second age of the kingdom. But the second coming of the ways of God are here. We have the sword of spirit. The only way that spiritual warfare can happen is you ha is if you have the ways of God in part. It has to be in part because if you had all of God's ways on this earth, there's no way men could stand up against God. But the sword of the Spirit in part, it shows us the wiles of the devil. We can start fighting Christian spiritual warfare. So with the sword of the Spirit, we can be Christians. It's going to take three years. We're in pre-Christianity right now. And we'll read about that in the timeline of Christian spiritual warfare. Note also that the Lord has always been in control. And we have laid before us the next 43 years. Revelation 9 through 12. The second coming of the sword of the Spirit. It's here. So many other things we could wrote, put here. Remember Daniel 12 verse 4. There's going to be great spiritual enlightenment. Yeah, yes, the sword of spirit from God. The Bible from God is back. The ways of God are back. In part, now we have the sword of the spirit. So for 43 years, there's going to be Christian spiritual warfare. John 12, 30 through 32. That's all how it ends. Satan's going to be cast off this world and Christ is going to resume his reign. In 43 years, the sword of spirit is back. Again, by the breaking of the seven seals lies the walls of the devil. Sword of Spirit shows us how to stand up against the walls of Satan. His life, he pretends to be God. Steals our peace as the second horseman of the apocalypse. He's Antichrist by telling us that Christ doesn't have all authority. Remember how Saul was persecuting Christians? Why did Saul do that? Why was Saul kicking against the goad? Because he believed Satan was God. Satan's not God. He's the Antichrist. God allowed him to pretend to be God so that... We could have spiritual warfare because men can't stand up against God. So the spirit's back by the breaking of the seven seals lies wiles of the devil. And those with ears to hear now, the whole world is not going to believe at one time. If we believed truth at one time, we wouldn't have 43 years to prepare 
for the second coming of the ways of God. Much less to speak of all the, you think the stores wouldn't have a run on them? You think the world wouldn't go in great chaos immediately? If everybody throughout the world believe, oh no, the Lord is returning in 43 years. No, that's not the ways of God. The ways of God work. All the ways of men fail. And that's what we, that's why we went through the ways of men to learn everything, everything that doesn't work. We need the Lord, the ways of the Lord. We need one faith, Christianity from God, the one true faith to save us from ourselves, to save us from the ways of men, to save us from all the suffering of men's ways. So if you're fortunate enough to have ears to hear early, you can now stand against him. You're standing against him, that means he's no longer able to persuade you. Preaching him is okay. And spiritual warfare has begun. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to give up preaching to men. It's going to take us 43 years. If we live that long, it's going to take us 43 years to overcome preaching to men, to overcome the religions of men. Again, the Lord wants to give us a chance. The ways of men don't work, but the ways of God does. You know, the ways of men had Christ returning in the air and there to be judgment. But you know what the Lord's ways are? The Bible from God can part so that we can learn it for 43 years because we're going to be judged by it. So we have 43 years to prepare for judgment. The great and terrible day of the Lord, that's going to determine whether you spend eternity in heaven or if you're still alive on this world and evil, it's going to determine if destroyed. Again, the end that the world is going to be in 720 years later, almost 800 years from now, and dead evil men are going to be living in the Hadean realm. But at the end of time, all the dead will rise from the grave. The de evil dead, because by then all of the righteous in the first resurrection, they're going to be in the kingdom of heaven, either on this earth or in heaven. But the evil dead will be raised one last time. and Their bodies and spirits destroyed, leaving their souls to suffer eternally in the Hadean realm. So the book of Revelation outlines all these things. So that's why... In the sword of the spirit, we study the book of Revelation first. It gives us a roadmap of what's coming and of how to study the Bible. Now, in the sword of the spirit, I put the book of Job first, even before that. Again, the ways of man, I don't know that I did it right or not. However I did it, it's wrong because I don't have a copy of love. I mean, men always fail. We need the failures of men a little bit longer so that we can overcome them. I'm confident that the lord is not always going to want us to study the book of job first we won't need to if we need to now we won't need to in 43 years so the book of revelation dual prophecy first century now now revelation chapter 8 was another short outline of the new testament and, and really dual prophecy of the new testament in the first age of christianity and the second age of christianity 43 years of spiritual warfare that precede the kingdom, the first and now the second, and in 43 years, the second coming of the kingdom of God. But this outline in Revelation 9 through 12 is a little bit more detailed, and it talks about the wild. I call it Christ's reverse dual prophecy, three woe outline of the good fight of faith. It's his second outline of the last days. And so what the last days are, 43 years of Christian spiritual warfare. The last 43 years of Satan's rule over men. The end time. Revelation is dual prophecy about the first and now the second age of the revelation of the ways of God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Now you can read and understand. And you can be blessed by reading the Bible again. You have the wisdom from above. It's back. Again, you may not believe that. It may not be time for you to believe it. But you probably will. Jesus spoke in parables about the kingdom. Matthew 13, verse 11, so that you wouldn't understand the Bible until now or whenever your time is to understand the Bible. Matthew 13, verse 11, you'll understand when the Lord determines you'll understand. Revelation 5, 1 and following, break, Christ breaks the seven seals through these prophecies, 2,000 year old prophecies that we can finally understand now. Hidden revelation, the Bible from God is now back. That's what the book of Revelation means, by the way. 
the revelation of Christ as opposed to the revelations of men. People couldn't understand the book of Revelation because it's way too high above our pay grade. We can't understand the Bible unless God reveals it to us. And the Bible is only going to be completed and revealed to humanity for 1,000 years. That's going to be while we're in the kingdom. Now we're going to read basically what's going to happen. Now, again, it's, there's a lot of foreshadowing. It's dual prophecy and foreshadowing. That's really what, what the whole Bible is about. It feels like you've been here before you have. Everything in life is showing us that the ways of men don't work, and they foreshadow the ways of God. I hear a lot of people talking about Caesar and the, the seal of Caesar. God, or you worship Caesar, which? So that's spiritual warfare between the, king, between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of men. It's that simple. It's really simple. We had to be in a strong delusion. I mean, the complicated thing about the Bible is keeping men from understanding the Bible. Is that not wild? Revelation 9 through 12. And I saw and heard a prophet, that is Jesus, flying in mid heaven, saying with a great voice, Woe, woe, woe for those that dwell. This is the Lord's outline. It's his three woe outline. He's describing things that are about to happen. That's what the book of Revelation is about. It's about the three woes mostly. There's a little bit after spiritual warfare, and there's a little bit before spiritual warfare. But the book of Revelation, it's it's what it's about, spiritual warfare. I heard a prophet flying in mid-heaven saying with a great voice, woe, woe, woe for those that dwell. And so that applies for us right now. Probably even more so than the first century because there are billions in the world now and there weren't in the first century. For those that dwell on the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three prophets sent. Now there are seven prophets sent by the Holy Spirit to give the book of Revelation, which completed the Bible, and the Bible was delivered once and for all time to the saints by the Holy Spirit, you could say, through these seven prophets. But now the three prophets sent. I think it's probably about the fact that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all involved in the book of Revelation and the warnings that we have. Now, as a watchman for the second coming of Christianity, it's my job to give you the Lord's warnings, not my warning, not the ways of men anymore. We're talking about revelation from God. By taking out the seven seals, which I could not do perfectly, I'm a man. You now have the Bible from God. You can read it well enough to where you can start fighting the good fight of faith for yourself. You can read it well enough to hear what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are saying to you. I know the Father in heaven says to me, hear him. It's Christ, not me. I know that Jesus is saying to me, Repent, for the second age of the kingdom is at hand. Who are yet to sound? So again, it's a process. 43-year process on purpose. Our Lord and Savior was still teaching the apostles after he died and after he was resurrected and the 40 years between the time he ascended. He's going to be teaching us for 43 years. We're going to be reading through the Bible probably every day through the Bible. Like a tree planted by the water, we're going to be learning what the Lord wants us to learn. Get ready for the second coming of the Lord. Judgment time, if you will, for us. If we're alive that long and we're still alive when the kingdom comes, we're going to have to pass that test. We're going to have to have overcome the ways of men. When the fifth prophet sounded, again, there's seven of that delivered the book of Revelation to the church in Asia Minor. Again, it's a process, and that's why you have one, two, three, four, five. You know, if you wanted to divide these up, they're they're all associated with the truth about the breaking of the lies of Satan. You know, Satan is not God, so that's a seal broken. No, Satan's not going to bring you peace. It's another seal broken. He lied. So all these lies of Satan, the prophets, you, you we're receiving more and more truth. And that's going to happen for the next 43 years. We're going to be given wisdom from above. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God the Father. That's that's what works again now. In Christianity, or at least even in pre-Christianity, as we prepare for this second age, one faith from God Christianity. Now, the religion of men didn't work. The religion of God does. And so now we pray for wisdom, and the Father grants it to us. How do we describe that? I don't know. The best way I know to describe it is the Lord is going to remove the cobwebs from between your ears. 
That's what you can understand the Bible. I saw a star from heaven fall to the earth, into the earth. <clears throat> now John is writing down what he's seeing in the book of Revelation. It's a vision. Is it real? Yes, it's a real vision describing real things that are happening in the spiritual realm, which, which cannot be described. <laughs> so here's our vision. Christ fell into the earth. And when did that happen? For three days. Parts of three days that he was dead. The spirit descended into the Hadean realm. And there was given to him the key to the bottomless pit. Was this to... Did Jesus give Satan the keys to the bottomless pit? Maybe I would lean that direction because this is dual prophecy. It's going to happen twice. And it didn't necessarily have to happen. Jesus could have gone to the Hadean realm and opened it up the demons and let them back at this time, but probably not. Remember, there's a great gulf between the areas, and Jesus would go down to prison and he preached to them. He probably gave to Satan the keys of the gates of the bottomless pit. So it's probably Satan that opened the bottomless pit. Again, this is in the this is in the first century when Jesus was dead. So what about now? Of course Christ is in heaven. Now. But the time period here is important for us to understand. The time period when Jesus died was three years after spiritual warfare began. So probably three years for us, Christianity will return don't get in a big hurry we've got to learn to learn agape love before we really worship together like we should and but we can gather together and we can start prepping we can start making provisions for what's coming ahead and that's what we need to focus on we need to focus on studying the bible alone or with our families then when we assemble together we can work on learning how to love each other and working on some other things maybe we We'll say the Lord's example prayer. I mean, we can we can do that, but we have to be very careful. You know, the Lord's name is jealous. He doesn't want to sing in songs like, have a little talk with Jesus. Consider the prayer the Lord would have us pray. We'd be praying for the kingdom to come. Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there went up a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And out of the smoke came forth locusts upon the earth, and power was given to them. Now, Satan has been given great power. In the book of Job, we read how he's given great power. That's how he convinced Job that he was God. And so Job thought Satan was God. That's why Job questioned God. That's where we've been. We have thought Satan was God. But now Satan's going to go back, and they're going to be empowered probably bring back more from evil men from the dead for Christianity. There's a great battle, and it's going to get worse and worse. And so what does that apply to us now? Perhaps we have three years to start getting ready. And perhaps, again, I don't know, but something like this will happen. Maybe three years from now, the Lord will send a coronal mass ejection. Space weather is part of the warfare. Chrome mass ejection, maybe to knock out electricity and especially cell phones. Because, again, I don't know how it's all going to happen, but I know some of these things are true. We have many people brought into this world, aliens, armies of other nations that are coming here to basically destroy us, to cause problems and interruptions. But it wouldn't surprise me at all that if in three years, Corona mass ejection knocks out all our power. And this disables men from getting their communications to cause all this havoc upon the earth. Because you see, the three woes are going to be aimed at evil people who don't repent. As the Lord's going to be taking care of Christians. Consider Ephesians chapter 2, verse 17. Scorpions of the earth have power, and it was said to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. So the first of all seems to be more demons with more power after three years. But again, they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green things, not those that are counted as righteous by God. You know, that's the same instructions that the Lord gave to Satan at first. 
in the in the book of Job. You know, don't don't take his life. And don't harm him at first. But the Lord has told Satan for the last 1,680 years that he could harm us and kill us and we could have wars and all these things are going on in the world today. We could suffer to show that the ways of men don't work. That they're in opposition to the ways of God. It's an enemy. I mean, it's not the people that are the enemy. It's the doctrine. Every wind of the doctrine means Satan's mega sword. Revelation 6, verse 4. And so when Jesus was in the grave, in prison, he spoke to those across this great gulf. And he gave them instructions too of what they could do. In the first century when Christianity started. Will he instruct modern men? I don't know. I, I don't know about that, but I guess perhaps. And so they're going to cause great harm on this earth. But they should not kill men. They'll be tormented for five months. Men. All things are worse. The three woes of spiritual warfare. Things are going to get worse, especially for evil men on this earth. And so, you know, five months, it's a half of ten. It's an incomplete period of time. Five months is 150 days. That's the same time as the world was destroyed by a flood. And, you know, it could mean that at the end, right before the kingdom comes, skip this, the last, very last part, that they should be tormented five months. And so there are going to be periods of time when, different periods of time when great hardships come upon these armies against the Lord, five months. So the first five months maybe of second age of Christianity. That means we're talking about three years from now, starting about five months if this is literal. It's going to be rough. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. Great, severe pain. And in those, I mean, the Lord's showing men who's, Who's in control? And in those days, men will seek death, and it will no in no wise find it, and they will desire to die, and death flees from them. Again, space weather. The Lord is not going to be striking men Himself. He's going to send these demons to do so. And this is Gnostic men destroying Gnostic men. It's going to be rough. But then we're going to have space weather. Things happening on this earth because of space weather. On punish evil men at first. Again, I probably wouldn't surprise me a bit. Coronal mass ejection, maybe knock out satellites, maybe knock out electricity and phones on this earth. And the bodies of the locusts were likened to horses prepared for war, powerful men, powerful armies, and upon their heads, as it were, crowns likened to gold. And their faces were as men's faces. Spirits of dead evil men possessing the bodies of kings and men. Again, things that happened in the first century. And they had hair as the hair of women. You know, John the Immerser was murdered by Herodias. Could have been demon-possessed Herodias. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Demons are going to come back possessing the bodies of wild animals. I assume it's going to be the same as it was the first time. 
And it might be worse because there's billions of people on this earth. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, soldiers. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, many soldiers, lots of equipment. Kind of sounds like what's going on now. Many horses rushing to war. And they have tails like the scorpions that stings and stings. And in their tails is their power to hurt me in five months. Again, the first five months probably are literal. It's 150 days, and that's, you know, that's the time Nero ruled over men, and that's just different times, different things happen. I think it's going to be time after Nero, between Nero's reign and Domitian's reign, when Christians had an escape, a time to escape. And again, we're going to see that here in a minute. But 150 days, first 150 days of Christianity are going to be rough for evil men. They have over them as king, the messenger of the abyss. His name in the Hebrew is Abaddon. These are the last days of Satan's reign, the last 43 years of the reign of Satan, the reign of ruin. That's what Satan's name means. And he has the name Apollyon. The first woe could be wave of... So the first woe, I think it's probably the wave of demons against men. Remember, we're going to be studying over these things once a year. We're going to be going through Revelation once a year. And as we go through Revelation once a year, we're going to have in our minds the rest of the Bible that we've gone through once a year. So every year we're going to, the Bible is going to be, we're going to be better and better able to understand it. And then in 43 years, when that which is perfect has come, when we have the Bible, at least in our minds and in our hearts, we understand what's about. That's when the second coming is. So this first woe, again, it's going to happen. Starting about three years, big wave of demons against men. Demons are spirits of dead evil men. Men against men. First woe is past. Behold, there come yet two woes hereafter. So that's the first ten years of Christianity. So where this is divided up. First ten years, the first part of the book of Acts, and the second ten years. And then the second thirty years. And then we're going to go to pre-Christianity. That's going to be the third one. But the first wall, first 10 years, it's going to get bad. Probably the first the first part is going to really start out bad, and then we're going to have 10 years of it. But there's two woes after that. And the six prophets sounded. Again, there are seven prophets. The Holy Spirit spoke through them, delivering the Bible, completing it once and for all time for the saints. Again, as we go through, the book of Revelation, for for them in the first century, it's right at the end. This was their last warning from God. But for us, we get this warning every year, basically for 43 years. A truth, truth from God. When the sixth prophet sent sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. It's the voice of Jesus. One saying to the sixth prophet sent, that had one trumpet, loose the four messengers. That abound at the great river Euphrates, and the four messengers were loosed. That had been prepared for the hour, and the day, and the month, and the year. Uh oh, something big is happening. First ten years takes us to about forty A.D. Right? And so, what has happened so far? First ten years, first ten years of woe against demons, against men, evil men. But then. At the end of that, you find him the Lord is going to uh, say, hold up a minute. Probably hold up space weather a minute because he's going to identify 144,000. Jewish Christians, okay, the demons didn't mess on the first 10 years. But now they're going to have to be sealed and they're going to have to be protected as the battle gets worse. And the four were loose that had been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year that they should kill the third part of men. Okay, so first 10 years, it's bad, but it's Gnostic against Gnostic. But then the second 10 years, you're going to read about, and again, the last 30 years, it's going to involve all of the rest of the New Testament and all the rest of the warfare. And third part of men are going to be destroyed. Again, I think by space weather and by Gnostic against Gnostic and by truth itself. So before all this happens, we're going to mark. And the number of the armies of the horsemen was tw twice 10,000 times 10,000. And I heard the number of them. 200 million in this vision. I'm hoping that there weren't that many in the first time. but might have been. But I guess 
I'm hoping there wasn't 200 million demons, spirits of dead evil men in Hayden Ramp, because this seems to be the number of demons that are going to oppose Christianity now after the first 10 years. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates as a fire, and a blue and brimstone, and the heads of lions, out of their mouths proceeded fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three plagues was the third part of men killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are likened to serpents and have heads, and with them they hurt. Again, fortunately, this last 30 years is going to get rough. And yes, there are going to be Christians that are caught in the crossfire. Remember Nero, persecuted Christian. Remember Domitian, persecuted Christian. The kingdoms of men against the kingdom of God, and men fought back. But for many of us, fortunately, we're not going to be alive in 43 years and have to go through this, these bad times. Probably between the reigns of Nero and Domitian, Christians are going to have a chance to escape and build some underground cities like they did in Turkey in the first century. And the rest of mankind who were not killed with these plagues repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons. Okay, you've got 30 years of rough things happening after the first 10. And still, many men didn't repent. Why did the Lord give us 43 years? It's long-suffering. Now, he's not willing for any to perish. But there's some that won't repent. It looks like a third of humanity. And they didn't repent of what? Worshiping demons. Satan pretending to be God. And other demons pretending to be God. The Holy Spirit or whatever. It takes for men to believe them and to believe that Christ does not have all authority. Whatever it takes to steal our peace, worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. You know, that's the problem with religious men and with idols. <laughs> they can't do anything for you. Not after you're dead. And they repented not of their murders, nor of their sorcery, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts so we ask ourselves you know how true is this about what's going on in the world today are the murderers in the world today yeah how about sorcery oh yeah fornication human trafficking all the things involved with the murder and fornication theft or the politicians that are trying to steal anything in this world today the elite the powerful they want more power well many of them are not going to repeat Repent. Still in Revelation 10, and I saw another mighty one sent coming down out of heaven, arrayed with a cloud and with the rain, the rainbow upon his head, and his face was as the sun and feet as pillars of fire. This is an avatar of Christ. Now, there's a bow on his head. This reminds us of the first horseman of the Antichrist. He had a, he had a bow, I think, that represented the Bible in his hand, or it could have been books of the Bible. I mean, he is the one with all authority. He's the only one that's going to lead this great fight of faith. The fight of faith is against the ways of men. And his feet was as the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Jesus Christ, an avatar of Jesus. Remember, he promised that he would never destroy the world by water again. This time it's by fire. And he had in his hand a little scroll opened. The Bible's of men. But now it's open. It's the sword of spirit. How did it get open? So the sword of the spirit that was obtained by the breaking of the, the seven lies of Satan. Again, that's how we understand the book of Revelation. It's just, you take those lies out of the Bible and you can understand the book of Revelation. And he set his right foot upon the sea. <clears throat> you take those lies out of the book of Revelation and it's time when the Lord is ready. We can then understand the book of Revelation. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left upon the earth, and he cried. So what in the world is going on? Here's this giant of a figure, one foot on the sea and on the earth, and Jesus now has the sword of the Spirit. And what's he saying? What's he crying out? When faith from God, Christianity is back. The second age of the kingdom is at hand. Now we can understand that now. Because we can understand the Bible. The mysteries of the kingdom. With a great voice as a lion roars. And when he cried, the seven thunders uttered their voices. You know, the king's back. The Lord had, the Lord hid his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, so that Satan could rule over the kingdoms of this world. And now Christ is back. The Bible is 
back. Are we going to see the Lord's face at this time? No. But we are going to see space weather. It's going to mark his coming back. When the world is destroyed by fire, do you not believe that anyone on this earth will not believe that the Lord, his ways are back? Now, we might see the Lord's face some other ways, but I think the destroyer is an avatar of Christ. But again, it's, it's, I don't believe the Lord's going to show his face with destruction. Anyway, won't be it. Either way, no matter what happens, it won't be long till we'll be in the great wedding feast. No matter what happens, we will immediately be in the great wedding feast. And so Jesus spoke with a great voice as a lion roars when he cried, when he cries out, and the seven thunders uttered their voices. The seven, it's the Holy Spirit. He spoke through seven prophets, but it's not seven Holy Spirits. But he used the seven men to record these things to deliver them to the seven churches in Asia Minor. What's the Holy Spirit telling? He's back. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, remember the Holy Spirit standing before the throne of God, speaking through the seven prophets, letting all those with ears to hear understand the second coming. Was at hand, and now is at hand for the second time. So John says, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. You couldn't have had the kingdoms of men. Satan couldn't have ruled over the kingdoms of men if you had had the word of God. It's been hidden away from us, from humanity, all but for 1,000 years. And the messenger that I saw standing upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his right hand to heaven, and he swore by him that lives forever and ever, who created the heaven and the things that are therein and the earth and the things that are therein and the sea and the things that are therein that there will be delay no longer. Oh, we've waited a long time for the Lord to save us from ourselves. 1,680 years this last time, but after 6,000 years of the ways of kingdoms of men, finally, we now know the truth because the Lord's granted us wisdom from above and we can be blessed with that wisdom. You know, in the kingdom of heaven, that's where we're going to have all spiritual blessings in Christ. The beatitudes are back. And that's what, exactly what we see in Revelation 1-3. You're going to be blessed when you understand and obey the words of God. But in the days of the voice of the seventh messenger, seventh prophet, when he is about to sound, then is finished the mystery of God. According to the good tidings, which he declared to his servants, the prophets. Again, remember this is dual prophecy. Happened in the first century, and it's happening right now. These things are looking forward to the time when it's done, but spiritual warfare is back. Right now, we're preparing for this here. We're preparing for what's written down in the book of Revelation that was written down 2,000 years ago. We're preparing for it to happen right now. According to the good tidings which he declared to his servants, the prophets, and the voice which I heard from heaven, I heard it again speaking with me and saying, Go, take the scroll which is open from the hand of the messenger that stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went, this is John, I went to the messenger, Christ, his avatar of Christ at least, asking him to give me the little scroll. The, I want the sword of the Spirit. Why? He's got the Great Commission. And he gave me the little scroll, and he said unto me, take it up and eat it up, and it will make your belly bitter. But in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll out of the messenger's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And when I had eaten it, my belly was made bitter. The good news makes you bitter. It's bitter and it's sweet. The gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The gospel of peace. And they say unto me. 
you prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Okay, in the first century, remember Acts chapter 21, I think it's critical of this. John and Peter, were, well, they kind of were odds at each other, it seems. And the Lord was asking Peter, Peter, do you love me? God, they love. And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know, I like you a lot. Phileo love. <laughs> Went through that three times. And God said, it's okay that you only like me a lot. Still need you to serve me. And you're going to make it, basically. And so Peter says, well, what about John? And the Lord says, what's it matter if he's still alive when I return? First coming of the Lord. And he was. And so John did not go again for his own great commission. But he didn't pin down these words so that right now you can take the gospel to the world. It's the gospel in part. It's the sword of the spirit. It gets us started fighting the good fight of faith. But it saves humanity from ourselves as we prepare for the second coming of the kingdom of God. The great and terrible day of the Lord. The great wedding feast. Now in Revelation chapter 11, the Lord again backs up. And we already got a big fly over in Revelation 8. Again, basic message there is a third of the world is going to be burned up by space weather. I think in truth and Gnosticism. Then we get, we got the three, the two O's so far. But we're fixing to get the third, which is going to be earlier in time. Revelation 11. The Lord's backing up. Why? Again, we don't understand the ways of the Lord, but it's probably because this is the way we're approaching the Bible now. We are studying the Bible from its end first so that we can know how to get started in fighting the good fight of faith. We're looking at the end so we can start at the beginning where we need to start. So now here's the beginning that we're going to get to in our reading after we read about the end. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and one said, Rise and measure the temple of God and altar and them that worship therein, and the court which is without. The temple leave it without. And do not measure it, for it's been given unto the Gentiles of the holy city, Will they tread underfoot forty and two months? So the temple was there when John was writing this down. Again, the book of Revelation about 70 AD, that's when the Bible was delivered once and for all time to the saints, and that's the same time when the temple was destroyed. The Gnostic temple, though, remember, because Gnostics had taken it over. Satan had taken over the temple in Jerusalem. He was in the bodies of men and and that's, remember, he told Saul that Christ didn't come in the flesh. He wasn't God. That's why Saul was kicking against the goals, persecuting Christians. And again, we know Satan was pretending to be God in the temple because of first, first Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. Also consider Genesis 3, 15. Or Satan bruised the heel of Christ. He was probably possessing the body of a Roman guard at that time. So John measured the temple. The Gentiles are going to tread it for 42 months, three and a half years. Nero persecuted Christians from 64 to 68 AD, three and a half years. So the book of Revelation, you read about Nero and Domitian both. He has a lot of arguments about which one it was, but both of them. Nero for about three and a half years, 42 months. And there was a little break, not much, probably enough to give Christians a chance to get out of Dodge. So here's where we are. Again, I jumped ahead of myself. We're not in the third woe yet. We're still at the, at the end of time. We're in about 70 AD again, right at 68 AD. That's where we picked up again. The, the last 30 years getting toward the end here. So Nero was ruling over the kingdoms of men with Satan. And I will give my two witnesses, prophets in the first century, and they will speak by prophecy a thousand two hundred and three score days, the same amount of time that Nero was ruling over the kingdoms of men. So Nero was having a little bit of trouble. Why did Nero blame Rome being burned on Christians? Because truth was killing him. Christians clothed in sackcloth, and you know, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. So Christians, I believe, is what's being talked about here in the first century. 
under when Nero was persecuting Christians. And if any man desired to hurt them by fire, again, this was the Lord was the, Christians weren't fighting back against men, but they were praying for God to deliver. So if you want to hurt Christians, especially at this point in time, and you're doing Nero's rule, you're going to be in trouble. If you decide to hurt them by fire, guess what? Fire proceeds out of their mouth, probably truth here, and devours their enemies. And if any man will desire to hurt them, in this manner must he be killed. These have the power to shut up the heavens, that it rains not during the days of their inspiration. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with every plague as often as they will desire. Again, probably through answered prayers. And remember, the cosmic clock, it's already in motion. And if you happen to pray for God to deliver you from our enemies and a CM, a CME comes, coronal mass ejection, well, it's God already had that plan. He knew you were going to pray that prayer. That's what predestination is. God doesn't change our minds when you say things, but he knows what's going to happen. And he's already set up the spaceway. <laughs> and when they will have finished their testimony, the savage beast that comes up out of the abyss, okay, for three and a half years, Nero's going to reign, but then he's going to kill himself or demon in him will kill him, whatever happens there. When we're talking about spiritual warfare here. Destroyer, maybe he was driven mad by the radiation from the sun. And the savage beast that comes up out of the abyss. So when they finish their testimony, these early Christians under Nero's rule, the savage beast that comes up out of the abyss, this is Domitian, he would claim to be the resurrected Nero. Savage beast comes up out of the abyss. He's going to make war with them. So it was Nero first and then Domitian, and he overcame them. How come? Because that was the Lord's plan. You had to let, he allowed Satan to make some smaller victories. So Satan would overcome them and kill them. Again, many Christians were killed under Nero, but then that stopped. Now Domitian comes along. He's going to kill a lot of Christians as well. Again, remember the mark of the beast. And their dead bodies in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So both in Jerusalem and in Rome, both Christians were murdered. One faith from God, Christians. They were murdered with the authority of Gnostic Rome. And again, that's going to be the same thing that happens in about 40 years or so, or whenever in our future, Christians are going to be murdered. and At times, they're going to be allowed to escape. Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified, Jerusalem. And from among the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations do men look upon their dead bodies three days and a half and suffer not their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And they that dwell on the earth rejoice over them and make merry. And they will send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them. Well, why was Christ crucified? Because he was a threat. All the religions of men, Bibles and religions of men. It was a warfare. And they tormented they tormented them that dwell on the earth. Why well, you got to get rid of Christians? The truth that Christians teach is going to persecute this world. Again, evil men that won't repent. And after the three days and a half, the breath of life from God entered into them. And they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon them that beheld them. Now, I don't know if these men would live... You either eat the mark of the beast or not, you're going to have your head chopped off. What are you going to do? You're going to have the mark of the beast? You're going to buy and sell and trade in the city or not? Maybe some of those that have been had their head chopped off came back to life. Whatever happened, great fear came upon them that beheld. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up here. And they went up into heavenly places in the clouds, and their enemies beheld them. So, is the same thing going to happen? In this world, then probably we're talking about close to the end. Hopefully, many of us are not going to be around then to go through this this kind of thing. But think the world's not going to know that Christ loves Christians, takes care of them. You kill them, brought back to life, they send up into heaven. Does that not send a message? And in that hour, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. This is probably the great and terrible day of the Lord. And there were killed in the earthquake 7,000 persons, and the rest were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. Now the second woe was passed. Behold, the third woe comes quickly.
And this is where the Lord has a reverse outline. Again, why does he have a reverse outline? So that we'll study what happens at the end first before we go back and learn how to become a Christian. We need to we need to learn what it's all about. So Christ gives us an outline in that order. So when we study the book of Revelation first, gives us no outline of what's coming up and what's going. So we can understand the Bible. We can understand what we're getting into. So we can count the cost. Revelation 11, verse 15. And the seventh prophet sent sounded, and there followed many voices in heaven. And they said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. And he will return to the ages of the ages. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty who is and who was, because you've taken your great power and did reign. Okay, he hid his power. He had to for Satan to reign. But now Christ is back. Now he reigns. He will again reign in 43 years. And the nations were angry, and your wrath came, and the time of the dead to be avenged, and the time to give their reward to your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear your authority, the small and the great, and to destroy them that destroy the earth. Are there men trying to destroy the earth right now? Or is your years? They're going to be taken care of. And there was opened. 43 years are going to be taken care of, or if not before then. And there was open the dwelling place of God. It is in the heavenly places, spiritual realm. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant. Now the temple of God made up of Christians were being built together into a holy dwelling place of God. The second age of Christianity is back. That is foreshadowed by the second temple rebuilt in Jerusalem in 531 BC. And there followed lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail and a great supernatural event was seen in heaven okay truth from god supernatural objective truth from god is it's miraculous for men i mean we're talking about supernatural micah 7 15 according to the days of your coming out of the land of egypt will i show unto marvelous things that is prophecy foreshadowing the first coming of christ the bible from god it's it's a miracle it's a miraculous thing. I mean, we're talking about God on earth. Now, he's not coming back down to earth this time, but it's a great supernatural event. The sword of a spirit. <clears throat> How did we get this after 1680 years? It's a miraculous event. The Lord God Almighty has all power. And it's back. That's what we're reading about. A great supernatural event was seen in heaven. Again, remember Daniel 12, verse 4. Spiritual enlightenment, great spiritual enlightenment. It's happening again. But this is the picture of the first world. We're reading about what happened in the first century. We couldn't know about it for 1,680 years because we couldn't have been under the kingdoms of men if we'd known how God did things, if we'd known about the ways of the Lord. But here's a, a picture of the church in the, a woman prayed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Okay, this is an avatar of Mary, and it's going to represent the church again dual prophecy maybe but it foreshadows other things there's a lot of foreshadowing and a lot of a lot of things happening here certainly where mary is used as an avatar at least of the woman the bride of christ it's it's going to be in the great wedding feast to come but a woman arrayed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stalk christianity and she was with child and she cries out, travailing in birth and in pain to be delivered. Of course, it would be Christ. Now, Christ brought the church into this world, but this is a vision. It shows out of Christianity came Christ. I mean, something special came out of one faith from God, Christianity. Travailing in birth and in pain to be delivered. And there was seen another sign in heavenly places, in the spiritual realm. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head seven crowns. Okay, so we see spiritual warfare in the heavenly places, in the spiritual realm. Now, I assume here that this is talking about the fact that, in a sense at least, there's spiritual warfare going, or God's allowing enemies to exist in the spiritual realm for 1,680 years before the war is brought on earth. So there's a conflict, though the Lord's not, involved with it because it would just be done so we have christ 
and the church and Satan and his followers talked about here before the 43 years. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of the heaven, Satan. Again, here we're going to be talking about Christianity or pre-Christianity. Satan has demons. Again, we don't know how, and apparently they don't have the power that they will have in three years. But you look around what's going on in the world today. A lot of people say it's demons. Yes, spirits are dead evil. I mean, yes, it's bad things are happening because it's always tell to the third part of the stars of heaven. And that may indicate instead of all of them, there may be a smaller portion now as opposed to three years on Christianity resume. And they did cast them to the earth. Again, in the spiritual realm, in the Hadean realm is where evil spirits of dead men are. But they're going to come back. They are back on this earth. And the serpent stood before the woman that is about to be delivered. And when she is delivered, he may devour, that he may devour her child. Now remember when Jesus was born on this earth, that Herod was possessed by Satan probably. And that's why he wanted to, that's why he killed all the children two years and younger on this earth. I mean, spiritual warfare began in the first century, began even earlier, didn't it? For Christ was even born on this earth. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Again, this is spiritual warfare in the heavenly so if you And the woman fled into the solitude where she has a place prepared of God. They may nourish her a thousand, two hundred, and three score days. Earlier we talked about Nero's reign. There was a small gap between Nero's reign and Domitian's reign. Again, out of an insignificant gap. It might have been three and a half years, maybe what this is talking about. Well, Christians had a chance to flee into Turkey. And there's underground cities where Christians escaped it with the world being destroyed by fire. Great and terrible day of the Lord. When new heaven and new earth are made for the meek to inherit and dwell on this earth in the last 720 years of the great wedding feast. So she fled into the solitude, probably Turkey, where she has a place prepared of God, that there they may nourish her a thousand, two hundred, three score days. Maybe there's underground cities in Turkey. Maybe they were dug by other people. And maybe... Those of you who are alive in 40 years, maybe the rich and the elite and all these underground cities they built, maybe they're going to be used by Christians. They may find a place that's already prepared by God. Maybe there's already some caves and other places that are, are ready where she has a place prepared of God, and there they may, they may nourish her 1,203 score days. And there was war in the heavenly places. Again, on earth, it's only going to be 43 years. But something happened before that, especially in the first before the first coming of the Lord. Michael and his messengers going forth to war against the serpent, Christ, the avatar of Christ, fighting against the devil. And the serpent warred and his messengers. you got to understand that the Lord is halfway standing back. Because Satan can't fight against him. But the Lord's allowing Satan to, to do this. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heavenly places. And so again, getting ready for the 43 years of Christian spiritual warfare. There was this fighting going on. But, and so in the spiritual realm, whatever that may mean, heavenly places, the great servant was cast down, the old snake, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was cast down to the earth. So when is this? when did this happen? Before the first three years of Christ's ministry upon this earth. Satan had power before that, yes. But I, we don't know much or have details, but it seems like he's getting more power on, on the earth. And so that includes now, doesn't it? Because if you have the sword of the Spirit back, Satan is going to get a little bit of more power to try to fight against God. But now the battle's on the earth. The deceiver of the whole world, he was cast down to the earth, and his messengers were cast down with him, more, more uh, demons. And I heard a great voice in heaven saying, Now comes the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Who accused them before our God day and night? And they overcame him. So what, that's what this battle is about, 43 years. Salvation is being brought down from heaven. It's just going to take us 43 years to get there, to have every spiritual blessing in Christ. And again, the power of God, it's, it's certainly not. It's only going to be in part 
again, because the ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men, exceeding abundantly above anything we could even comprehend. The kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, who accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And so that foreshadows what's going on now. If you have the sword of the Spirit, and you're standing up against Satan, you fight the good fight of faith, you're going to win. Why? Because Christ died in this battle. You may die in it as well, and it would be the best thing that could ever possibly happen to you or me or whoever, to die in the same war that Christ died in. But we're going to make it through this war because Christ died for humanity. But we're going to be victorious because of his blood. And because of the word of their testimony, the gospel, the good news, the gospel of the kingdom that Christ preached, we're going to win because we're going to take the sword of the Spirit to the world. And because they love not their lives, even unto death. It happened in the first century. It's going to happen again. Those that live by the sword will die by the sword. Now Jesus is saying, you love your enemies yourself, your neighbor. Again, we have to overcome the ways of men, and I don't know how this is going to happen. But as we learn to love one another, we're going to lay down our sword. Now, I, I would, this is just me. I would highly recommend you keep your guns. If you want to, maybe put, learn how to put some saw rock in them. You don't want to kill anybody, but you might need your guns to scare somebody. Again, my warning is for you to hear the Lord's warning. And the Lord's warning is don't love your life on this earth. There's something better coming. Therefore rejoice, O heavenlies, and you that dwell in them. Woe for the earth and for the sea, because the devil has gone down unto you, having great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time, only 43 years. And when the serpent saw that he was cast down to the earth, he persecuted the woman that brought forth the man-child. And there were given to the woman the two wings of the great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and to her place where she is nourished for a time and a times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So again, Christ was born into this world, and we read about spiritual warfare, and now we're getting back to the woman given wings of an eagle. Now, remember when Christ was on this earth, and again, in the heavenlies, there's spiritual warfare going on, and the devil's not going to stop. And so that's why Jesus was, why he was given gifts. He's allowed to give gifts so he could escape to Egypt. He could escape to Egypt and hide away from men trying to kill him for times and time and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth after the woman water as a river that he might cause her to be carried away by the stream you know the devil wants to limit the population of this world just so he gets everyone again he's trying to limit the truth being proclaimed if you kill enough people maybe the truth won't be proclaimed into the world and he continued to reign point is evil is pulling out every stop here trying to starve us and kill us all but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the river which the serpent cast out of his mouth. And the serpent waxed wroth with the woman and went away to make war with the rest of her seed. Of course, Satan wasn't going to be able to crucify, get rid of Christ the way he wanted to. And he, he was in the body of a Roman guard, probably, and when he nailed his feet to the cross, he did. He did, but he didn't stop the water of life. But we were required to be in an apostasy we were required to be in apostasy so that Christianity and the kingdom, the great wedding feast, would involve billions, not just millions, that it would have involved from the first century. He didn't stop the tree of life. He didn't stop the gospel of the kingdom. Do you dare to raise up the sword of the Spirit against Satan's mega sword? of every wind of the doctrine of men.